Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of the Sports Insight with your host Al Nar Khan. In this video, we give you sports information from all across the globe. You guys can surely reach out to us on our social media handle, which is at the rate of Indus News Sports. That works both for Twitter and Instagram. But anyways, today it's going to be an interesting journey because we're going to take you on a journey of you know the Winter Sports you know Association. How we're going to do that? We have a very special guest with us. Uh, Eric Amador, retired Iftikhar Bajwa, who is president of Islamabad Winter Sports Association. And he has a lot of titles in terms of him representing not only the sports itself, in terms of skiing tournaments, but there is so much more that we want to learn from him and we want the word out to all of you. So welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So sir, I'll start off with the, your journey. Obviously, we talk about skiing in Pakistan, the sport itself in Pakistan. How is your passion currently, you know, how did it all start to begin with? Because I'm sure all the viewers out there would want to know. Uh, uh, in 1988, uh, I was a freshly commissioned officer. Right. And I wanted to do something like more adventurous. Right. Earlier, while I was doing training, I was doing uh, ski, um, athletics and other sports. Right. But then I decided to go for skiing. And 88, uh, March 88, I went for a course. And then uh, 89 again, I went for another course and Interbase Championship. Right. And luckily, I got a medal, a bronze medal in Interbase Championship, right. which actually encouraged me to uh, go further. And uh, we were lucky, uh, 1990 Ski Federation of Pakistan was established. And 1991, there was a first National Ski Championship. Right. A very modest beginning, I would say. And I was lucky to be a part of Pakistan Air Force team. Right. And I participated uh, in the first uh, championship. And then I participated for, uh, say, seven championships, wow. national championships. Later, uh, uh, local guys, we opened the sport, uh, the facility to uh, the local children of Naltar, who were like always residing there. Right. So we gave them an opportunity because we thought that they are more appropriate. Their lungs are like uh, better, uh, better groomed. Right. So uh, we gave them opportunity and they were good. I got retirement uh, after playing the seventh national championship, and then I was uh, inducted as a technical delegate, a local technical delegate to conduct the championships. Right. And since then, uh, I'm on with it. Uh, then I became the executive committee member, and uh, I represented also in, uh, from Pakistan side in 1996. Right. In 10 days of dawn championship in Iran. Right. We were the very first uh, two teams to go. One team went to China right. for the Asian Winter Games and the other went to Iran. That was the first year that we saw skiing abroad as competitors. And later on, uh, uh, it, it just started, it just continued. And I became a technical delegate and I had been always participating. Then I was inducted there as a survival training instructor where I got a lot of opportunity to ski. Right. And I was a survival training instructor at uh, Naltar for good six years in uh, two tenures and it just uh, continued and then uh, I think 2002 uh, I went to Iran as a coach with the children team and uh, same year I went to uh, uh, no, Japan for a Asian uh, a sports instructor seminar. Right. You have also uh, gotten yourself multiple you know titles in terms of obviously going abroad going to different countries like you mentioned you mentioned Iran you mentioned China you mentioned Japan so while participating and representing not only the country of of course you know your team as a whole did you get hold of some titles like you mentioned at the start that you know when the interbase started back in 98 you know when you talked about the bronze medal but being or having that passion and bringing it to life and then going further ahead because going internationally is a step further than the local things that you were doing? In National Ski Championships, yes, I got some medals, bronze medal, uh, 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 two silver medals, uh, if I correctly recall. Right. And then internationally, it was actually a very, uh, I would say, a humble beginning uh, as far as, because we didn't know skiing, much about skiing when we went abroad and then we uh, had a chance to look at what skiing is like. Right. And then we left and the, uh, the next guys, uh, locals from Naltar, they came and we gave them an opportunity. They had a good like two, three months of training there. Right. And then out of those guys, uh, two are Olympians, Muhammad Abbas and Muhammad Kareem. Nice. And uh, I would say Federation is very proud of producing these Olympians. Right. And they participated in Olympics uh, in Vancouver 2010 and Kareem participated in 2014 and 2018. Right. And I think Kareem should be going again. And now we have our cross-country guy also uh, uh, qualified. Yeah. So now we have, and maybe there's a girl also who is coming up in uh, 
figure skating. Maybe yeah. she also qualifies and we go to, uh, we take a team of three to four uh, athletes for uh, Beijing Winter Olympics. Right, so that's like major achievement in terms of, you know, making those individuals, you know, those raw talent individuals and, you know, bringing them to life and making them come to a point of representing the country. Uh, briefly, you know, I would want you to not only, besides you just mentioned, obviously, in terms of your achievement, what exactly you as a president of the Samba, the Winter Sports Association, do, do you, you know, besides getting hold of these individuals and training them for the long run, but what else is, you know, in terms of the, the mission or the goals that you have to look into as the president? I took, I took over as president about two years back, Islamabad the Winter Sports Association. And uh, this winter I was able to take a uh, team of 22 uh, boys and girls, young boys and girls, to Naltar for a training session of five days, which was very like useful. Right. And uh, my first, uh, I would say, um, uh, priority is that I'm able to uh, make a formidable team participate in the national championships. Right. Uh, of course, uh, the children of northern area, especially Naltar, are very good because they get a better chance to uh, practice. The children of Islamabad and say from the plain areas, they get less opportunity. Right. But with the expansion of Ski Federation into Winter Sports Federation, I think the opportunities have uh, uh, gotten uh, broad based because we have now uh, ice hockey and uh, skating, uh, speed skating. So with these things coming up, I think uh, uh, there is a fairly good chance for the uh, children of other areas to participate in a uh, nice way in the national championship. Right. And you just mentioned ice hockey. I was also going through news a few days back in terms of a few NGOs also trying to put, put in the best in terms of, you know, the ice hockey in Chitral and the upper areas. You know, they're trying to promote the sport. Do you see that, you know, the sport like skiing and, and the adventure sport is going to make a long-term impact in our country and, you know, all the raw talent that we're trying to produce? I'm very optimistic that, uh, yes, we uh, stand a fairly good chance right. for the fact that uh, the amount of snow we have uh, and areas we have. Right. The only problem in the start is that it started, I would say, late. And also it entails in the start uh, reasonably uh, good uh, investment. Like till this time, there are only two places that one can go for skiing. Right. Uh, one is Naltar, which is actually a training school of the Air Force, and right. they spare a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, uh, ski facility for the children to go and ski. We have national championships there. Right. But naturally, there are limitations because there's less accommodation. It's not a commercial uh, place as such. Right. The other place is Malam Jabba. Malam Jabba is commercial. Right. Uh, but it's not like very easy for the children to go and uh, ski at their own. It's, right. uh, I would say, reasonably expensive. Uh, Winter Sports Federation of Pakistan is trying its best to develop another uh, resort which would be actually run uh, like a commercial entity. Nice. When that is done, I think there will be a better chance for the children to go and ski and uh, there will be a better opportunity for the associations to go and make their uh, team practice uh, while they're not participating in other games. Well, absolutely. That is uh, one interesting, uh, you know, initiative that you just mentioned. You know, we would love that to, you know, even the viewers, I'm sure, would want to know at some point. I don't know if you want to disclose it right now, but it would be super great. One more thing. I mean, like in terms of the youngsters, Slowly and gradually, you know, as social media takes over, you know, everybody wants to. A lot of people come up to me asking about Naltar because, you know, we all know how far it is in terms of going there. And, you know, like you said, people who want to go, it's not very accessible to be precise. Yes, yes, uh, yes. And But then you said Malam Jabba. Malam Jabba is kind of accessible but expensive. So the, 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 the place that you are intending and your team is intending to make, how commercially accessible and financially accessible would be for the youth out there? Uh, there are parties, private parties, looking for uh, the development of a ski resort. And the uh, Federation is also making endeavors. Uh, the place, first of uh, all, the place has to be uh, accessible in terms of journey. Right. Naltar is not that comfortably accessible. True. Road True. Is, get, is blocked, maybe weather is not great to fly in and fly out. Right. And then Naltar is not uh, commercial. It is definitely an Air Force, a Defense Forces uh, institution. Right. But they uh, support a lot to the activity. Right. Uh, we have uh, places, we have, uh, I, I personally know about five, seven places that uh, they can be, uh, a very good uh, ski uh, slopes can be developed. Right. But then when we talk uh, slopes only, uh, we actually tend to forget one thing that now we have skating also in right. Hunza. 
or those areas where the temperatures they go below zero and they go far below zero, right. we have ice. And we just accumulate some water and uh, the ice uh, uh, field is ready and uh, we can always go ahead with the skating and uh, ice hockey and uh, figure skating and other events. So with these facilities coming up, I think uh, that requirement stays that we need to have a commercially uh, uh, available uh, place for uh, skiing. Right. But uh, then other, with other things coming up, I think we, the, the, the thing is uh, going uh, broad based as a whole. Well, uh, we surely would want to continue this entire journey with you. So we, ha we still have with us Air Commodore, a retired Iftikhar Bajwa, who is actually discussing the world of you know, adventure sports in terms of skiing. And we surely would want to know more from him. We'll take a quick break. Once we get back from the break, there is more coming up your way. So see you guys after the break. And yes, welcome back from the break. And yes, we are still on that cold, chill journey of skiing when we talk about adventure sports. And we still have with us here Commodore Retire Sakar Bajwa. So once again, thank you for being a part of the show. I would sort of want to know in terms of the Ski Federation of Pakistan, which was, I think, founded back in 1990. I would rather want you to maybe express the brainchild or, you know, how it actually came to life and who were the initiators who brought it to where it is now. Uh, when I went for the first time for skiing, 88 uh, and then 89, there were talks of developing or establishing a federation, Air Commodore Nonehal Shah, uh, Air Commodore uh, Anwar, late Anwar, he was talking and he was officer commanding training and base commander was uh, Air Commodore Nonehal Shah. Right. So it was Air Commodore Nonehal Shah who established Ski Federation of Pakistan. Before that, uh, uh, skiing in Pakistan actually started uh, what we have heard is uh, 1950, since 1958. Right. It was uh, uh, late uh, group captain Shah Khan who started skiing, but then it, skiing just went on like it was a very, uh, I would say, uh, basics of skiing and uh, very, uh, it remained rudimentary right. till we established the federation and Air Commodore uh, Nonehal Shah uh, worked very hard, I, uh, I would say, to establish the federation and to get it going. He nowadays he's the senior vice president of the Winter Sports Federation, and he's still contributing and participating in all the activities. Wow, that's an interesting take, sir. I'm glad that you know all the viewers out there know that, sir. I would also want to know, in terms of we also host events, we also host international, you know, ski, you know, all the adventure sport individuals come to Nalthar. Or, or, you know, that's something that, you know, I've heard and, you know, there's so much news about it out there. But because we want to show the world that, you know, how things are in our country in terms of us trying to promote and put in our best to tell that, you know, this is also the things that we do in Pakistan and host events like these. So what's your take on, you know, those individuals and those athletes who actually come to you? Uh, if one has to actually analyze uh, what you've asked, it is better to talk to some mountaineer or a tracker coming from abroad to uh, who's visiting Pakistan. Right. They are actually amazed. The amount of potential that we have, the areas we have, right. I would say that we are a little unlucky that we have not uh, so far been very successful in exploiting uh, these potentials. Right. So we have a lot of, I would say, great opportunity to exploit mountaineering, mountain right. tracking, right. and uh, high altitude marathon. Air Force has uh, started to have international marathon also right. at Kunjrab or higher altitude and other uh, uh, adventure activities. So I think uh, the potential is huge. It's just uh, a matter of uh, uh, establishing basic facilities and, the, and naturally security is the first thing. Alhamdulillah, it's been uh, very nice since yeah. quite some time now. So I think it's uh, right time that we exploit and we invite people from outside. Right, and, and sir, your passion for adventure, you know, when we talk, you talk about pretty much all sorts of adventure. I mean, like, would you also want to share, because now I can have an idea that there is more to you than just skiing. So what else adventure journeys that you've stepped into as, you know, yourself? Pakistan Air Force gave me a great opportunity to uh, be a survival training instructor at Naltar. And that actually, I would say, uh, gave me a way towards winter sports and other adventurous activities. I've been doing like skiing, uh, mountain tracking, uh, climbing. I've been to Camp 3 on Gashabram 2 right. uh, with a foreign team. I've been doing windsurfing, sailing, and other uh, uh, sea activities also. Right. So I would say end of the day that I'm very thankful to Pakistan Air Force that it gave me an opportunity uh, to be like what foreigners say that uh, only the 
sons and daughters of industrialists afford to do it. Right. And Air Force made me, gave me an opportunity, opportunity to do this. Right. But I'm sure, sir, it, it's all about the passion because I think you yes. had the passion, you wanted to pursue it, and it took you further. But, you know, in generally, we see a lot of potential. We, we see a lot of social media upgrowth intakes in terms of, you know, people posting pictures of the northern areas of Pakistan and, you know, people trying to market it. Uh, there are some ups and downs, obviously, we sometimes have to put in, point the finger somewhere that, you know, this was where we went wrong. But right now, I, as you mentioned, we are spot on to the right time and I think this is the right time because in terms of the social media, because back then, you know, there wasn't really a huge social media impact. So how do you see, or if, if we start now, like you said, for instance, you mentioned that, you know, you want, you, your team intends to actually open up a resort of the sort where people can come and learn skiing, not only that, ice individually, ice hockey and you know, all those sports. How do you see it's going to be impactful and how much time would it take if we start taking that initiative now for the country? Um, I think this is the right time. I would say, rather say that we are a bit late already. Right. Uh, it's time to develop a reasonably big ski infrastructure. Right. Because that actually takes a lot of investment. Other facilities do take investment, but not as much as a ski lift. Right. In terms of time, I think a couple of years would be enough to establish the uh, basics because uh, in, we have to develop a place at a higher altitude where working months are like uh, six, seven, eight months. So I think it will take about two years of time to uh, develop a ski resort. And I would say there's a dire need to develop a ski resort without which I don't think that uh, uh, the sport will actually uh, uh, develop the way we expect it to develop. Right. Uh, and sir, I would also want you to, you know, maybe put in the word out there to all the foreign viewers who actually want to visit Pakistan, you know, in terms of, you know, the adventure sport and the adventure journey, because, you know, they still do have questions in terms of coming to Pakistan. You know, sometimes they think it's going to be technically very hard. But I think the government has also eased in those accessibilities to individuals who actually want to visit Pakistan for adventure. For foreigners, I would say that uh, when, uh, uh, when they, they, they plan to come to Pakistan, they have a lot of apprehensions. When they come and go back, they go back with the changed, I would say, uh, impression of Pakistan. Right. So for Pakistan, what is important is that when we have foreigners, we make such, uh, I would say, arrangements that it's easy and convenient for them to come and visit Pakistan. In terms of... Uh, Skiing, coming for skiing to Pakistan, I would say they can come and they can always go to Malam Jabba, right. uh, have a room up there in that hotel and uh, have two, three days of good skiing there. Right. I think uh, there's a good opportunity for the foreigners to come and ski in Pakistan. And besides skiing, if, we, if they want to come out here for adventure, like you mentioned, trekking for, you know, maybe climbing, I think we still have all those resorts and all those options out there for all the viewers, you know. In uh, late 90s, uh, 99, 2000 or so time frame, right. I was uh, doing mountaineering. In those days in Gilgit, Baltistan areas, there used to be about uh, 60 to 70 mountaineering expeditions. Right. And there used to be about 140, 50 trekking expeditions. Wow. They give a lot of job opportunities to the people of the northern areas. Right. Uh, down the line, uh, the security went bad and they, uh, I would say uh, the, the tendency decreased. Right. Now again, the security situation is good. I would say that uh, foreigners, they should be encouraged to Pax, uh, come to Pakistan. And for them uh, doing uh, mountain tracking uh, on one of the, uh, say, few of the longest glaciers uh, other than North Pole, that is uh, Baltoro, Biafo, Hispar and these glaciers, Right. They can come and uh, do trekking and they can always attempt mountains. Well, uh, thank you for that. And I think this input would surely bring in more value to them. Sir, I would also want to, I would want you to take people to the Olympics journey because when we look back into the first participation in the Summer Olympics was back in, in 1948 and the first time Pakistan won Summer, Olymp Summer Olympic medal was in 1956. But slowly and gradually, Pakistan's debut at the winter you know, that was 2010, if I'm not wrong. Yes. So how do you see this journey further? And as you mentioned, there are so much talent that you and your association are working on. In the long run, do you see we coming up to that point of the caliber that we can get maybe gold for Pakistan in terms of the Olympics skiing side? Our first uh, endeavor was to uh, just to uh, host Pakistan flag in Winter Olympics. Right. 
we tried in uh, 2006 and uh, we could not do it. 2010, Abbas, Muhammad Abbas, he qualified uh, for uh, Winter Olympics and we were able to do that. Right. And now we have more people who can qualify and we uh, are uh, like uh, number of athletes is increasing. Looking at the gold in uh, alpine skiing, I think is too far a cry because uh, the people living in Alps and US, they are too good. Yeah. Uh, Japan is, uh, uh, I would say, very good, these countries. But then uh, looking at uh, Asian medal first, I think, should is our priority. Right. Or regional championships is our priority. And in terms of uh, what we do as federation, we are giving opportunities to uh, the, the children, um, uh, boys and girls, to come and have some training and practice with us. Right. And then, then we invite uh, coaches from abroad. We also send teams for coaching uh, to other countries. Right. And if we continue the same way, the day is not far that we will be able to win uh, some medal in the Asian Championship. We do win medals in regional cups and these places. Our children, they go and they win medals in regional championships uh, right. uh, in Lebanon, in Turkey and these places. Right. But uh, having an Asian medal first, I think that would be more important. Right. And if, um, you just mentioned that you know you are always open to r young raw talent out there. So for instance, if someone wants to reach out and talk to your association or tell your association that you know, uh, sir, we have this individual who has the potential or you know, this boy, this young girl, and we want your support or help. So how can they actually reach out to you and your team? Uh, they can always contact me and uh, uh, they can contact Federation. Right. Federation's website and uh, everything is available and uh, Federation would guide those people from say Islamabad area, Pindi Islamabad area to us. Right. And uh, this uh, winter I took like this uh, 2022 guys for training to Naltar. I think people come and I would appreciate if more uh, young children they come. Uh, I'll be very happy as president of the Winter Sports Association of Islamabad. I'd like to thank you for taking our time and being a part of the show and discussing uh, the world of opportunities that we can do in terms of skiing and, you know, the adventure sport. Thank you once again, Thank sir. you very much. So that was pretty much it in terms of uh, us providing you information about what in Pakistan you can do. And that was Eric Commodore, retired at the Car Bajwa. And it was a great journey discussing uh, the world of Winter Olympics and the, his winter, you know, the association itself, him being the president. If you think your child or, you know, you know some boy or a girl who has that raw talent, you guys can surely reach out to him. Anyways, guys, if you have any other queries, you guys can reach out to me on our social media handle, which is at the rate of Indus News Sports. That works both for Twitter and Instagram. Till then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.